Welcome to Forecast. I'm Sam Frankfurt, and this is Citizens of Fortitude. Drop. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Sam, yeah. buddy. Yeah. What's up, boys? Sam We're doing Frankfurt. it. We my, are doing it. My when buddy I, of 11 years. Yeah. November of 2010, we got introduced to each other. That's right. Was Do Sam you, your first personal training client in New York? I think he was my second. Second I, one? I've been quoted as number two. Okay, real quick story before we get started. I know we're going to cover a lot of topics, but this one's a good one. It was two, uh, November of 2010. 2010. And we first uh, met. you had just it moved. It was our first you, meeting. You it was had, our first. Yes, your first meeting. I had found, I had found the peak. Um, I was ready to get in shape. And uh, I walked in. They said, oh, I got this great young trainer. He just moved here from West Virginia. This was like the second personal training session I had ever led, okay. by the way. So I didn't know what I was doing And I had all. no I idea that do. that was the case. Yeah. And we li I literally walk in. It was on, I believe, the eighth floor. Yeah. Uh, right, right down the street yep. here. And I come in, come in the elevator, elevator opens, it's this huge gym. And I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm ready to get in shape. And literally Kyle made me, he's like, okay, let's see. Uh, and you made me walk with a sandbag up and down the stairs like 10 times. And I was like, what is going on here? There's this huge gym with all this equipment. And this guy is making me walk all up and down the stairs 10 times. And by the way, I signed up, got the 10 pack. I, I didn't want to work with wimps. <laughs> yeah. was, I think I was I like, you were just testing my will, yeah. my heart and will. Yeah. I, was, I just wanted to see and this literally, somebody who I, and, to me. And how many training sessions have we had since then? I've not once walked up and down the, those stairs again. Never. That was the, that was the first and yeah. only time I yeah. ever did that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, there was, I mean, so we're here for a reason. I just wanted to see if you would do what I told yeah. you to I do. I mean, I hope I held yeah. up okay. Yeah. And if you're a wimp and yeah. you weren't. 10 years later, baby, and we're still you going. Stopped. Yeah. yeah. For those of you who don't know, New York City stairwells are brutal. Yeah. Like so steep. Oh my God. <laughs> those were steep. <laughs> steep. Yeah. Yeah. There were no no windows. It's like, a, no like it was windows. just like an internal like yeah. up, up and down tunnel. Hot. Double, yeah. double oh, height. Cramped. Right? Every floor was like yeah. double height. Awful. Yeah. No, no escape. They Fat, never end. Fast forward. I'm Sam OG. Yeah, yeah. Me, OG, me and my wife have Sammy been the Bull. Sammy the Bull. Sam, Sammy OG. The only Sam allowed on the board. That's Everybody right. Everybody else has I'm, to have I'm a, a little different passionate name about or that. a different last name. I know there's name. an ND. If there's yeah. a, I think yeah. his first name is Sam, but we don't know that. <laughs> it's Sam E. He's, yeah, yeah. He's Sam. Sam is. I'm, you, you know, I like to hold that. That's yeah. You know, it's important to me. Yeah. You know, some, if, it's the little things in life. If there's two things that I've learned that are important to Sam is that he's the only Sam on the board. And that the uh, the numbers on the plates face in when you yeah. lower the bar. <laughs> he lets them know. Yeah. So you know, yeah. I, I, yes, I'm, and I, I still the, owe you guys that sign in the gym. But yeah. it's you know energy in energy in, <laughs> and energy uh, in. that's important. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Now, pro, listen, it's a pro move. It's yeah. a high level move. Yeah, and I feel you know I feel good giving that gift to the you know the newcomers that come in plates out. We we you know spend a little extra time changing those plates around, but it feels good getting that you know the energy in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like to bring the energy every day. Yeah, you um, do. You never, I've ne there's never no. been a day that Sam like snuck in and nobody noticed him not there <laughs> no. he and he his, just got a session in and snuck out. That's never existed in the he, thousands of he sessions. He makes his presence done. felt, but I also think it's like a great example of why even more so than having like a trainer with you, why having good training partners is important. Because when you have that energy in a session and you have someone else who's excited and pushing, you cannot help but be um, contagious. Yeah, it takes energy almost to push against it. Yeah, you got to roll with it. Yeah. Like someone else is excited to squat, you get excited to squat. So like having good built-in training partners is critical. And Sam is always bringing the heat. How good was our <laughs> session before this? It was uh, unbelievable. Like I was even, happy we got it in. Me, you, Damien, and Jess. And like by the end of it, we were all on the same page. All pushing each other. All, pushing all rooting each, each other, other on. Yeah. It was all over. We like we you know like connected about other stuff after the session. That's right. Sort of like rode the wave. And, and let me say that's that's one of the things that I may be having a, a tough day. You know things may not be going my way. I come in here and somehow like my energy's boosted, and I feel a responsibility to bring the energy to the room. Um, and that's you know for you know for however long we've been doing this now, um, it's been a big part of my life, a big part of you know sort of what gets me up. And, you know, there's the Monday mornings where I wake up and I'm like, dude, I got to get a session in and I'll prioritize it because it's going to change, you know, my week. It's going to change my day. Um, it's going to change how, how I work. It's going to change how I treat people just, you know, just by being around, being that positive force. So going back to when we first started, did you ever think all those things would have anything to do with like a training program? 
or like your your uh, fitness life? Uh, what, I, do you, what, this yeah, might please. be easier. Like, yeah, yeah, what was it that like made you reach out to start with a trainer in the first place? You know what? I it, it's it's so far. It, I you know I, I think I saw people around me getting in better shape. Because I, I was time, I was historically yeah. just a runner. I had done a few marathons. I had never really been strong. Right. Um, I think I worked out senior year in, in college, like with a bunch of buddies, and was always sort of like just kind of hanging on. We went to Gold's Gym in Madison, Wisconsin, and there was a lot of guys that were huge, and I was just trying to get under the bar. I never had done a squat. Um, and I just sort of felt like was I was curious, which, yeah. And I and I just dove in. And, and at, then, at the time, you weren't married. You didn't have kids. Nope. You were. I mean, this was eleven years ago. So you were like, like what, like twenty nine or thirty? Yeah, around or, no thirty. Thirty two. Yeah, thirty two. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, I was yeah, like thirty. Were, yeah, because I'm we're, I'm two years behind. Yeah, you. so thirty two, and I was I was. I was with my but you were with you were my current of, wife Melissa, yeah, who was also of a four member. Engaged. Like this thinking was like about, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about getting before that. Exactly right. And, and then um, you know, fast forward two kids later, and yeah. still going strong. Yeah. Probably you know, putting up max pretty close to max big weights. Lifts. Yeah, pretty you keep big getting lifts. better. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the reality is like you haven't uh, from eleven years ago, I would say that you're in the best shape now than you've ever been leading up to that. There's obviously like yeah, little dips sort and valleys, of like yeah, as it sure. goes, but overall, like you're you're more capable now than I've ever seen you. Hundred percent, and more well rounded, and, sure. and I'm more knowledgeable in the gym. I know yeah. what's up. I can do some of the stuff on my own. Although somehow it always feels better to just be in the gym with the people. I mean, yeah. I guess it goes to the energy piece, right? Yeah. Um, for sure. So and, that, and, and you, you've invested you and we'll go over like kind of what you do for sure. a living, but like you, you work with businesses in like the, the world of health and fitness, um, usually like direct to consumer businesses too. Correct. So like you have, you, you're a curious guy and like everybody knew that, that comes into a, the gym that you're in, you're always asking like who they are, what their backstory is, what brought them there. And, and I can tell like you're, 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 you're trying to like piece together, like how it all fits together, like how health and fitness fits into these people. And then like trying to apply it to the, the grander scheme of things. Yeah. I mean, I would say happy to go into more of, of what we do, but I'm at my core relationship person. So, you know, yeah. I feed off, you know, just as I mentioned, I feed off people's energy. I'm curious about people, yeah. you know, not necessarily what they do, but what makes them tick. Um, you know, what, what makes, you know, what, 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 uh, what they're interested in, you know, yeah. what they do on the side. I mean, I think one of the things about the Ford is like, there's a eclectic group of people. Yeah. But a I, lot and, of, it, and I think it helps the energy you asking those questions to like, so that you're, you're able to form connections and people feel comfortable in the spaces. Yeah, absolutely. And so whether it's you cheering someone on during the thaw or during a lift or asking them about them. So you get to know them a little bit, whether they have a family, kids, what they're doing, what their interests are, it's, it just, it brings everyone together. I mean, that's what I do, not just there, but I find that to be a key to just being successful. It's just being curious and being interested in people, right? And giving them the attention. So that's a, that. That's just sort of yeah, you know, sort of table stakes. Yeah. So like with with everything that's going on in like the industry, like health and fitness, and like the the at home workout regimens, the there's been like a big growth in like uh, meditation, mindfulness. Um, apps, um, and then, you know, like the, the engine experience, at least like recently has been sort of CrossFit boot camp, spin class, where, wh what's, what's relevant in the next 10 years or what's, uh, well, maybe like what's relevant now that we think things are trending like in the next 10 years. Yeah. I mean, we were just talking about it. I think, I mean, obviously the trend is up and to the right. And it, it continues. People are more focused on, you know, fitness. They're more focused on what they're putting in their bodies. So, you know, the label reading. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, they're more interested in tracking everything. Yeah. Right. So whether it's the iPhone or the Fitbit, I think how many members are in the in the Fort Fitbit club? Yeah, the I whoop mean, group. The whoop yeah. group. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Group. Right. Uh, you know, Flickr's leading that one. Yeah. I think there's like eighty members. People are just very focused on just overall intake. Um, and I, you know, I think the industry itself is, is on the up, upswing. Mm -hmm. I think there, obviously there's a ton of competition. There's a lot of people competing for, you know, time. Um, but I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, sort of this, this mix of sort of virtual 
and physical. Like everyone yeah. who thought we were going virtual, full virtual, like again, going back to the community piece and, and while you can replicate some of it virtually, there's nothing like being in person. Cause it's kind of like the work thing. Like you were saying too, like the, you can do a zoom meeting. Right, but if you're it, like, are Zoom meetings better in perpetuity? Are they no. are they a better well, you, way of you doing miss it? That, you miss that ten minutes before the class and ten minutes after the class, or that inner workout, sort of those conversations, that relationship building. And I think you know where you know you may save time by doing all Zoom. And we talked about this a little bit on the onset, prior to the prior to the pod. Like, there's you're missing something. You're missing that that people impact. That pe- you know you're gonna you're gonna need building culture. Um, and so I think the relationship piece is certainly not going away. And I think there's some people that, you know, I, we, we all have people that, you know, sort of love the pandemic, right? They're like, oh my God, I don't have to go out. Or, you know, some of my friend's wives are like, oh, my husband's not going out anymore or vice versa. Right. And so I think there was certain, there was that club of people that were like, oh, this pandemic is amazing. Yeah. Not the pandemic itself, but the fact that like, hey, the effect of the the pandemic, the effect of like, hey, we're hunkering down and I love that we're all together all the time. Yeah. I think even those people are like, okay, like we need to like, we got to live, we got to get out. We got to, you know, there needs to be some sort of, yeah, you get antsy. Yeah. At some point. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's not a straightforward answer to like where we're going. Um, but I certainly believe that like, while we are going to be more tech enabled and more data driven and we're more focused on stats and, and sort of all the other intricacies, like we are certainly not going to like a full virtual world. We're not training in the metaverse. Like we are going to be, you know, working yeah. out, lifting weights together in a community. Uh, as you know, long as we some, still have bodies. Yeah. Like so if we have bodies, they need to be maintained, man. <laughs> That's right. Like they, you're going to feel it if you don't take care of it. I've heard, dude, I've heard of people, you know, like there's always like early adopters and stuff, but I've heard people now living in their VR goggles. <laughs> so like they go to, they go to sleep <laughs> with, with their VR goggles on. They do all their meetings. They do all their activities throughout the day like with these things isn't it scary to think about where we could go like how well like, there's you know, already people like yeah, they're people trying it they're tr- they're trying to do it but i can't help but think like dude you're you still have a body underneath those goggles yeah, it's, like it's wild. you can do this for a while but till till you like upload yourself like into the into the the void like you're gonna have to take care of the body that you're in and you're gonna feel it everything we do is done with our bodies that, that, like that's where i think I do think in the next like 10, 20 years, the idea of fitness is going to shift toward like a realization of what, like, this is just body maintenance. This is life maintenance. Cause we don't really think about it now. Like it's thought of as let's get in sick shape. Let's get a six pack. Let's like do this high intensity, <laughs> you know, getting great, like be able yeah. to do these like crazy things. I think it's going to shift a little bit toward like, no, you're going to have a body and you're going to have it till you die. And it's going to affect everything that you do and how you live. And you're going to want that to be optimal. How do you best like maintenance it and like take care of it? And then also talk about like, like the TAM, the total addressable market. There's like, you know, a a portion of the market of people that like want to get in shape, but everybody has a body. So if it's, if it's an industry of body maintenance versus like a fitness industry, it's a much bigger market. Sure. And I do think like, at least from our perspective, from like when, when we started, you know, the gym from like, you know, our mission of what we want to do, we're trying to help people experience their most powerful selves, not get in sick shape. We didn't make a gym to just get to this like six pack place or super strong place. Or like, I think it's like, you see, at least I see it's, it's really a place to build some confidence, both confidence in the gym, but also Mm self-confidence. Like there's a bunch of people that I've seen here that have like really bought in and you see the output like six months later, like they're different people. Yeah. And yeah, they're sure they're taking off their shirt occasionally where they wouldn't have six months earlier. That's part of the confidence. But that's part of the confidence. Yeah. Um, And that's a beautiful thing when I see that and I'm like, um, it's getting some swag. Yeah. Yeah. Like dude, like Like Flicker Flicker took his shorts off. He's feeling good. Well, I'm not sure about Flicker. (laughs) But but no, but like literally like you see, like it's it's like people bought in and like the confidence transcends and it leaves the gym too. But you talk about body maintenance, you talk about maintaining, like I'm at the point now, you know, again, 43, almost 44 years old where like, yes, I'm, I'm lifting stronger weights, but like, I'm also focused on like, you know, not getting injured, 
but working through injuries and like, you know, trying to like keep myself coming because I don't want to take time off. Right. Like you don't want to set yourself back also where you're, and you wrote that blog the other day, like, and I, and I firmly believe this. Like I've had a couple aches and pains lately. I stepped on a shell. I, you know, hurt my thumb and I'm like, oh God, you know, am I not going to be able to come work out? But like, even if I'm lifting lighter weight, like I think to your point, like, and I, and, and I'm, and I firmly believe this, like got to do something. Yeah. yeah. Got to maintain. Because if I go sit on the couch for six weeks or if I go sit out, like, do you know how much harder it's going to be to sort of get back? Yeah. Especially and, as you get older. And I, and listen, shout out to Bobby Frankfurt, my mom, yeah. who's, you know, a couple years older than me, but she's coming in. <laughs> yeah. and she loves it. Yeah. And she's two, three yeah. times a week. Yeah. She's coming great. My, I mean, dude, she's, she puts in a great effort. Too. She puts in a great effort. She loves us, but this, I mean, it's a community for her too. Yeah. And she looks forward to this. This is one of the highlights of her week. And it's built her confidence. So like it, it cool. transcends age. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know what I mean? It, Which is the beautiful thing. It's yeah. a mindset to what you're talking about of, of like, do I go to the gym or not? Like I had this thing happen to me or not. It's kind of sort of that David Goggins mindset where he wakes up and he goes for a run every day because he hates running. And he's going to run whether it's a snowstorm, whether there's lightning outside, like it doesn't matter. He's going to do it. Whether he has a broken leg, he's going to go hobble. He's gonna do. He's gonna do the activity regardless because he's alive and that's what he does. And taking that approach, of like, not that you have to like push through pain or like injure yourself, but go do what you can do. Like, there's something you can do. Go do the activity. Do your best at it. Keep yourself safe. But that way, mentally, you're 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 not yeah, broken. You're Right, you're not treating yourself as like it's over or like you messed up or like you, gotta, you missed it. You gotta you're fight. there. You gotta find. Yeah. I, I told you you're there. You're the Goggins running story. Yeah, That's yeah. for another time. Yeah, yeah. yeah you Goggins can't running story. You <laughs> can't like come on a podcast and yeah. not talk about the Goggins running <laughs> story, dude. 2008, uh, Marquee Jet. Uh, I was invited. Friends with all That's those guys. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Itzler. Itzler. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. I there was a retreat. Goggins was there as a guest speaker. We decided to go for a run. Like Is this after when he, he was spoke. living with Itzler, or they were just they, friends? They were close at that point. I don't think that was prior. Okay. To the, that was like I think even prior to the book. Yeah. Um, but they had become close friends, and we decided to go for a run. Madison's a beautiful place. I went out. Shout out University of Wisconsin. Um, but but we went for a run by the by the river, um, by the lake. Excuse me. And uh, Goggins led the run, and it was me and Jesse and Goggins, and literally it was like a six mile run. That last mile under you know five minute mile i finished that run puked you know <laughs> actually you can, i don't know if jesse would admit this but he was sort of bringing up the rear uh, but it was one of those like out of body experiences where he was next to me yelling at me that like i could i could keep up i could keep up and i was like it was literally like lightheaded out of body experience but i pushed it and Dude, it I've showed sort of that movie. I've, I, it yeah. showed me that I had that gear yeah. that I didn't think I, if he was not next to me, there was no way that was happening. Right. I've seen um, this from you though. Like even at my wedding, when we had that, that run the, the day after oh, we all got like blitz Creek oh, at the, uh, what was the name the of the loose bar? caboose? The loose caboose. Oh, yeah. the loose caboose. <laughs> like the next that morning. Place is special. But there's <laughs> a loose caboose t-shirt. <laughs> but there was a, we ran the next morning and there was a lot of runners yeah. at my wedding because my wife's like in the running community. Yeah. And you were there with like the top pack. Just trying to hang on, Dude, bro. Dude, just, just with them though. Like, yeah. like whatever it takes to like hang with just them. Just fight. You, yeah, you've got a special gift, man. Yeah to like that, to yeah. hang yeah i don't know i yeah i'm just trying it's it's become a little bit tougher as i get a little older well, but mentally, i'm just trying you, mentally. mentally you have like a Dan skill was surprised at the end of that race he's like wow you're yeah, strong yeah, Sam. Yeah. Well, i saw Sam, you at the loose caboose at 1 a.m yeah. what are you doing here <laughs> yeah well, like, how are you doing they're also like there were a few like really fast, fast guys, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fast minute legit fast. crew there dude yeah yeah a few fast. very fast like 230 marathoners 240 i mean fitz is a gazelle yeah, she's a good example. She's she, got, she got second in the Brooklyn Marathon. Wow. Yeah. Really? I don't know if I saw that. Dude, she's Amazing. crushing it. Yeah, she's, she's a crusher. Fast. She's very But fast. her stride is so natural. It's really she's yeah. beautiful Powerful. to watch. Yeah, she's tough. Yeah. Those she's those you're guys. you're tough. Where, where do you think your toughness comes from? Yeah. You're like, you do have a very unique skill of just like mental I, I toughness. You know, it's a very good question. I think it's maybe like just growing up, just, a, you know, just. A, a little bit smaller you know like you know i'm five nine stretching right like <laughs> you know i say five ten but that's clearly not the case and i just think it's 
you know, I sort of peaked later in life and got a little yeah, bit. I don't, I I don't think that's enough because yeah. there's a lot of five nine people that aren't mentally right. tough. Man. I don't know. I think I it's the most popular height in the United States. Is it yeah. five nine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, so it just it sort it. of just it, it it happened like at some point, sort of in my like teen years, later teen years. It just there was like a, a some switch. But you that just something I it, I've noticed about you that's like you do believe in yourself. You believe that you're capable of doing it. You wouldn't you wouldn't push and 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 suffer the well, sometimes way that you're I'm not able sure to if suffer. I believe at the time I want to test myself, but I ultimately end up like yeah. hanging out. I mean it is that mental toughness, but yeah, I I it's mental fortitude. It's yeah. but I mean it's it's and you have to have good I appreciate good it. Self talk. You have to. Yeah. You must mentally. like whatever voice is going on inside your head has got to be encouraging. Yeah. And I mean, it goes back to like the way you encourage other people in the gym. Yeah. You know, no, when absolutely. you get to know them, you encourage absolutely. them. You always boost other people up. And that same voice that you're boosting other people lives inside your head too. Yeah. No, yeah. I, f I, f I feed off my own voice. I feed off other people's mm -hmm. energy. Like I would definitely say that on a scale from, you know, one to 10, we talk about the introvert, extrovert scale. Like I feed yeah. off being around other people for yeah. sure. Like doesn't mean I don't need my quiet time, but like, I'm, I'm an energy, you know, I feed off just like I try to feed people's energy. Yeah. I'm feeding off the energy of you guys, feeding off the energy of the gym. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, for sure. That's, that's part of like who I am is just trying to be mentally tough in everything I do. Yeah. yeah. So for sure. So like, what do you, what what's the next 10 years of, of look like for you and your business and your fitness and yeah. life? What do you want for yourself? Like, yeah, what are so you working on? It's it's a very good question. I mean, I, I'm very blessed uh, just to give a little background. So yeah. we have a family office. We invest in, in directly into consumer-facing companies. We define our mantra sort of as disruptive consumer-facing businesses. We define consumer disruptive very broadly because we can. We don't, we don't have outside capital. So where you have to stick to a strict mandate, we've sort of deviated from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, fortunate fortunate to have a great role model and, and mentor in my pops who, you know, as Lou, Lou built, but built and ran coach. So, um, you know, the, you know, my, my role model every day. Um, and then we have another partner, my brother-in-law earn, and we have about a portfolio of 55, 60 companies. Um, we're active probably in 15 or so of them. Um, and again, transcend consumer, but broadly consumer facing. Um, and we love what we do. How you much know, do helping, you, you and your dad and Earn talk every day? Like, do you, are you guys like in each other's ear a fair amount, or like no, we, do you leave each have, other? To we your we have like weekly cadence. Yeah. You know, we obviously like when issues come up or things that we need to address, like we can move quick and we 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 talk frequently. But I would say like there's the the weekly meetings, and then you know and you know we sort of we get meet, it done. Yeah, we get yeah, it done, and, and you know I spend a lot of time on certain portfolio companies. Lou spends the time on a on a handful of companies, you know, fewer but deeper, mm -hmm. um, and earn on a other on some other companies, so and then we sort of, of we cross, yeah, we delegate, and yeah. then there's some that we sort of cross, like overlap on. Um, what, are, what are the types of uh, industries and businesses that you're personally like curious, interested, excited about? So you know, one company that I'm knee deep in now is a company called Malk, the plant based milk company. Yeah. Um, so we've we've Why had some it, exposure to CPG. What do you think it's been like so late recently that like alternative milks are like so popular? There's a huge economy of yeah. alternative no, and, milks, and well, dairy milk is going down, and you know, yeah. plant based milk is going up, and I think it feeds into sort of data. It feeds into sort of health and wellness. It it is that trend that people are sort of looking at and saying, okay, this is an easy substitute for me to make, and by the way, it's healthier, right? What they don't understand is that not every plant based milk is healthy, right? And that goes into sort of looking at the ingredient deck and trying to really figure out what is in it. You know, like Oatly, for example, which is obviously the biggest one and has done an incredible job marketing, their number two ingredient is canola oil. So people don't right. really necessarily understand that even though I'm switching to oat milk and that's better than drinking dairy, um, that, you know, that it's actually not. You're taking you know, in a lot of canola oil every exactly. day where you. And so that's yeah, part of the information, otherwise. you know, that's part of the just, you know, getting the information out to the marketplace. Yeah. And I'm not so I'm not promoting our our own investment. Although I will say it, that mock is you know that is they're known as the, the simplest ingredient. But you need to know your positioning when you go to market. Mm -hmm. So CPG has been an area where we focused on, you know, bar, body armor, which everyone who's in yeah, the gym knows that we've been involved in that one. That is the <laughs> darling of the portfolio. But when they came out, they had a distinct focus of like we're going to be a healthier for you sports drink, and they had a big goal. 
right? Which was, hey, Gatorade dominates this market. They have 90% market share. But what have you ever looked at the label of Gatorade? It's shit. Yeah. Red dye five. Right. It's all these additives, right? Sugar and so water. we really wanted to reinvent the category. It took a lot of will, took some some dollars, it took some aggressive marketing. And time. And time. It was a ten yeah. year investment. I remember it was ten years ago. And now we're the number two sports drink. We just passed Powerade last summer. Unbelievable. We're gonna, you know, we have our target set on Gatorade. We just sold to Coke, so now we're in that Coke system, which is both good and bad, depending on how you look at it. Kind of lose a little bit of the entrepreneurial spirit of the business, but you're on the trucks. You have the marketing and the and marketing, you know, power, and you also have the international piece that's gonna, you know, help mm -hmm. take it to next. Um, but it's really about educating the consumer and giving them a good alternative and explaining why that alternative a, is worth a few few dollars more or a few cents more or whatever it's worth and explaining the you know the cost benefit analysis. Um, but really looking at markets that you know you can really um, disrupt. Um, where again we talk about TAM total total yeah. adjustable market. Yeah, yeah. You know if you look at dairy milk, right? It's up and to the right. It's taking market share. It's crowded. So you really need to have a distinct point of view on what you're trying to do within that category, right? Because not everyone is going to be successful. And by the way, right. a lot of these players are well capitalized. They're owned by big conglomerates, so they can throw money at the problem. Mm -hmm. When you're a, a startup, who you have to be scrappy. You have to find ways to sort of penetrate and disrupt with limited dollars yeah and that and, and you, gotta be a, you gotta be about something at that point you exactly. really gotta you be have about to, and it. you have to believe yeah as the entrepreneur and as the people behind that you have to really believe mm -hmm. like you guys believe in what you're doing i mean you and you feel it and there's no yeah there's you no can't make me stop doing it yeah. and that's, a, that's exactly. the thing i'm gonna be you're doing gonna this. find a way I, yeah, you take all this stuff away from me, I'm still going to be doing this. 100%. You, you can't stop that Like, because I believe in it. And let me just say, yeah. you guys, during a period of COVID, and we've had several conversations, Like, you guys deserve a lot of credit for where you guys are now. And I know you're not taking any victory laps, and I know you're just getting started. But that there were some dark days there when no <laughs> one was around New York City. Yeah, man. You guys yeah. were down here trying to hang on, knowing that what you guys were offering was really special, right? And it, was, it deserved to be in the world. And you had to fight and make some really hard decisions and 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 look where you are and, and, and yeah i learned i learned a really valuable lesson oh, thank well, you bro seriously that's no, no, really I, meaningful I believe that too. thank you i thank really you. honestly i mean i learned that you really can't go out of business unless you quit like it's very difficult to get to this point where like somebody's going to take you away in handcuffs and you're not going to be able to like do <laughs> yeah. you know what i they mean did, like they that did try that in some lot. gyms in new york yeah, yeah. 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 Right? i yeah. mean it's possible but it takes a lot to get to that point point. Yeah. and if you believe in what you're doing you're all about what you're doing nobody can stop you you're going to keep fit you're going to figure or it you're out you're going to find a way yeah, well that's can, also not being overextended like you guys had these you had that you had the one box you had an opportunity yeah. to get out of the second like you were scrappy yeah you had an opportunity to sort of like you know scale back know what you you're doing that's the problem you know that you run into ultimately as a, as a business owner and entrepreneur is like hey if, if you're over your skis too far ultimately like yeah they're gonna drag you out right because yeah. you're not gonna have a choice <laughs> at some point yeah. so you knew you know you guys you guys dialed it back at the right time and then sort of went all in post pandemic because you knew what you were you you guys knew what you were doing yeah. yeah and um, i mean and some or whether us, you knew what you're doing or not it, it worked yeah, out. it worked yeah. and what yeah. gave us confidence is you know we kind of had to start over and because of that because we we had a handful of you guys there was i think we counted there was like about 20 people um that stayed from before yep. covid to after wow is that so it, it was like yeah, yeah i mean we're up to i think like almost 300 or yeah. something like it's a lot yeah um and and we realized like there's a big market of people that want to like train the way that we do or like solve the fitness problem the way that we do or at least maybe just be around us <laughs> they yeah. want to like be yeah. in our spaces there's a lot more than we thought before where we thought it was like a very tiny niche when we first started the business we were like there's got to be 100 people right and that was our whole thing there's, there's 100 people that are like, like hey, new york city people, the model works yeah it's yeah. new york city yeah. there's got to be 100 there's people nine who train billion with us. people or, or nine million yeah. people we got to be able to find 100 yeah and what we learned after covid was like there's a lot more than 100 there's yeah. a lot of and people. And what do you think that, what do you think, just curious, like what do you think that catalyst was? Do you think it was COVID and people focused on health? Do you think it was sort of the competition shutting down? Do you think it was like, what, I mean, was it a, I'm sure it was a mix of many different factors, yeah. well, but like what do you- like what One you, big thing is that we got ourselves in front of people for the first time and had to articulate our product, which we never did before. Before we just waited, we, we didn't even wait. We just, we, were, we trained, me and Dan were coaching every day 
you know, like five to six hours a day. We weren't even available to like meet new customers. We're, we weren't trying to articulate. You our weren't set up for the, scale. Yeah. You weren't set up we to really we get the yeah, message thinking, out. Yeah, exactly. We weren't even thinking scale, right? Like we, we, we could sort of talk to people if they came down and found us, but we definitely weren't reaching out to the public saying like, hey, this is if what we do this and is this is why we're special. We didn't yeah. do any yeah. effort we, like we that. We just hoped that other people would send their friends to us. Yeah. That was that was our only yeah. way of, of really attracting business. And then business. when we did start reaching out and people responded, it was extremely encouraging because then we realized like, hey, oh, there's a lot more people that actually want and this. And some people actually commute far. They're not yeah. like, hey, like yeah. I'm coming 20 blocks, but like there are people that are coming from other boroughs. There are yeah. people that are yeah. like making, you know, you know, making it a priority. I mean, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. It makes you so feel you guys, like So that's what we call special. top of the funnel acquisition. Like you were relying on really referrals and friends, but a lot of people like they're intimidated, right? But you guys really weren't getting the message out. And then you guys say, hey, like I, we can market this product and there are people that want to be part of this. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. That's powerful. And that, that was powerful yeah. to us. That gave us so much encouragement and it changed our belief of what our company could be. Yeah, like it yeah. changed the vision of what we could and, make. And that you could, I mean, listen, I we know when Woody comes here, like he was like, hey, dude, you got to open in San Francisco. Like yeah. people come in here and they're like, yeah, hey, this doesn't exist in other markets. Right. It, they, that is the most popular thing we hear with, from anybody from another town, which is like, you know, you know, this would crush in Des Moines or wherever they're from. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, because they're one person who right, has to exactly. go. It's like, I don't think well, that's I'm exactly not sure Des Moines should be your yeah. second market. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, not sure know. exactly that's how it works, <laughs> but... Uh, Okay, yeah. Sam, before we go, I want yeah, to harken please. back to something that you said earlier, which was interesting to me, which is you talked about body armor and the fact that it was a 10 year journey. And I think this idea of time horizons in business and in fitness kind of run in parallel, which is people think if they don't get in shape in 90 days or they're not profitable in 90 days, like it's a failure. And I just think that that's like kind of a, a false premise. Like what, what are you, you seeing as like, like real reasonable time horizons for for and I know it's probably a case by case basis. Yeah. It's a tough question to answer. Or or how do you convince people that you're working with that maybe their time horizon is is not appropriate or too aggressive for what it is they're looking for? Yeah, it's a it's a very good question. And I would say body armor happened to be a longer time horizon than probably what exists today in the marketplace, just the way that the capital markets are. I mean, obviously we've gone into a little bit of a down downtick here, so that may change backward. Um, but it was a real methodical drive by the by the person who was the visionary, Mike Rapoli. He drove that business. He sort of, he basically saw it happening and understood the length of that journey. I think some people who are first time operators want to get to the finish line. And, you know, I think it says it on the board here. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not the, it's not the destination. It's really the journey. Yeah. It's you know, the, the man who loves walking is going to go further than the man who loves the destination. And that's, I mean, honestly, that sort of sums it up, right? Like you need to be on this journey. You need to be patient. You need to pick and choose your opportunities and you need to sort of like no, no two cases are the same. Um, you know, going to business for a second, like you, you need to have that, you know, you need to be able to pivot, but you need to have sort of that North star and you need to sort of be, art, you know, articulating it, you know, sort of, you know, driving towards that. Um, but it takes time. Success takes time. Being successful doesn't happen overnight. Yes, there are overnight successes that we see and we all sort of, oh my goodness, could that be me? But like at the end of the day, like driving towards that takes time. In the gym, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, I, I, more than anyone that, you know, you got to really commit. You got to stay in it. And, you know, ultimately it'll play out, but it plays out over, you don't look in the mirror every day and like, oh, you know, it, you, that's why you kind of do those monthly shots or you do, you know, you, yeah. you take periods of time where it's, it's a journey, man. And, and you got to be on a journey that you're enjoying because otherwise you're going to want to try to peel off that journey as quickly as possible. And that's ultimately like, you're going to sacrifice, yeah, you know, what you could, what, what could end up being yeah. the case. I think it's the, it's the biggest mistake people make is they, they want it too soon. And if they would just stick with it. Like, you know, so many things are possible. Well, they also try to make decisions to make it happen quicker. And that ultimately could sacrifice the long term. Mm -hmm. Right. So like it's both ways. Like they want it. But and it's one thing to want it, but accept the fact that it could take longer. Yeah. It's another thing to want it and try to make it happen sooner when you're when it's just not ready. Yeah. You know, and that's ultimately where people, you know, that's ultimately where the rubber hits the road and people ultimately end up, you know, finding, you know, it ends up hurting the potential right yeah it's it's 
Yeah. There's no like playbook for right. time. There's no playbook on, you know, there's, you know, obviously business case studies, personal case studies in the gym, but there's no, everything is different. Right. And so they're like, you have to understand your journey and where you're trying to go. Yeah. Right. And accept the fact that it's not going to just happen. Right. Well, it's like you were saying before, it's like the time horizon is infinite if, if you're just doing it because it's what you believe in and what you love. And yeah, you've already arrived. Yeah. The result, if, if the results are, are just kind of inconsequential at that point. Yeah. They're cool because let me just say, like, like even just like once you get to the end of the journey, right, once you're at the destination, you're looking back and like, yeah, don't don't get me wrong. Like getting to a finish line on a business or monetizing or anything like that's an unbelievable accomplishment and that you don't take for granted because, it, you know, it doesn't happen a lot. Right. It's a it's a few time opportunity potentially. Right. But it's really about the journey. It's the meetings. It's the dinners. It's the strategy. It's the it's that that's the, the fun part. It's yeah. the relationships. And then yeah, all of yeah. a sudden, like the investment sold. And again, not, that's a great outcome. But like you miss all that other stuff. Right. right? So like you got to enjoy it all the way to monetization. You don't want to just rush to monetization and not appreciate what right. you're doing along the way. Right. Yeah. And that's the fitness journey too, right? Yeah. Like you want to enjoy coming similar. in the gym yeah. every day. Yeah. Getting yeah. on that fan bike and fan bike and dying after 50 right. seconds like I did. I was out the other day, by the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> tough. What? Yeah. Well, if you, cause if you don't enjoy it or if you don't enjoy it and you get there fast, you're going to piss it away anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's just, what's gonna, you're not going to keep it. You got to enjoy it to keep doing it. No one who looks great or is in great shape doesn't enjoy it. I just don't believe that that's true. Yeah, you're right. It's how it goes. You got to love yeah. it. Yeah. You got to love it to get there. And I think business is the same way. There, if you, you don't love, love it, it. It's, it's too hard. It's too hard if you don't enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, and then ultimately, like, you <laughs> think you're running toward something, you get there, and ultimately you're like, wait, hold on, this was supposed to feel better. Yeah. Or this was supposed to feel different. Or I already, I had these, like, thoughts in my mind on how this was going to feel, and it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. And now I've done it all and I sort of didn't really enjoy it because yeah. I was running towards this place, right? And that's, I mean, we've, I've heard that so many times from founders. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, and yeah. then they kind of go back around and they try to do it differently yeah. the second time to, and really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to miss out on the good stuff. Business, no. fitness, any of it. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy the trip. Well, Sam Frankfurt, thank you. Thank so you, boys. Much, it was a pleasure. I yeah, appreciate you guys great. having me on. This has been awesome. Much love, this dude. Been nice. Family. Citizens of Fortitude. Citizen. Sam yeah. Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah, boys. I'm Kyle. I'm Dan. This is where we take training seriously. And we do what works. And we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Peace. Yep. Cheers.